We're down here at DMW, and that can only mean one thing. That's right, the next part of our build series on the CHOP 200 is here, and this is where we go absolutely nuts on the vehicle and accessorize this thing to turn it into an absolute beast. So we're taking the stock standard CHOP 200, putting all the bar work on, we're putting suspension, tires, a stack of different accessories, and making this thing an absolute touring weapon. But first, we've got the tray and the canopy going on, but there's been a little bit of a change in direction on this build. You better come with me. On the last episode, I took my first ever brand new car, a 200 series with zero Ks on the clock, straight into the DMW workshop to be chopped in half. Oh! Righto, wish me luck. Chopping the rear of the body was just the first step, and the chassis soon also got the chop before being braced and extended by 650 mil. With a longer wheelbase in place, a new cab wall was added, and the rear diff reinforced before the 200 went to the spray booth. And that brings us to the next stage of the build, as the boys at DMW get ready to fabricate a tray and canopy for the big rig. Now the design for the canopy has gotten a bit grander than what I initially planned for, but more on that a bit later. For now, let's take a look at some of the other mods underway. The factory suspension is coming out to be replaced by a full custom kit from Fulcrum Suspension. The struts, the shocks, and all the springs have been specifically designed to go with this vehicle. Keep in mind, the GVM has been increased up to four and a half tonnes, so because of that, we need special suspension. Um, Graham and all the boys, Nathan, from Fulcrum Suspension, have put this together. They've been working on this vehicle behind the scenes for some time now. When we get the wheels on, we get it driving, it's gonna go back to Fulcrum for a final check, but I'll tell you what, I think this vehicle's gonna drive like an absolute boss because this suspension has been fine-tuned for this vehicle. Meanwhile, things have been progressing on the tray build, and I tell you, the beauty in the design is in the finer details. Every nook and cranny on this tray is neatly fitted with useful accessories, making this one incredibly functional full drive accessory. Well, the tray's just been fitted, and I tell you what, it's turned out way better than I could have ever imagined, mate. I had a rough idea in my head what this is gonna look like, but when you see the real thing coming together like this, mate, let's go through it, because it's got, obviously, the first thing you guys are gonna notice is Got a little thing that says diesel on the side here, mate. That's that's yeah. what. That's so it. the diesel tank goes in the front of the headboard. Just to, it's wasted space, Sean. So yeah. we've utilised that as your fuel tank area. And it's also a great spot to put your weight as well. So yeah. we're about 70 litres in no, that tank. 80, 80 litres in this one. 80 yeah. litres in that tank. So it's got an 80 litre tank in the headboard, which is obviously positioned between the axles, nice and low as well. So that weight is gonna be really well distributed on the vehicle, which is, I reckon, really important. On the other side of the tray, you'll notice there's exactly the same little um, outlet there, but for water. So, mate, the water tank is under the tray yep, as well. that's a 70 litre one. So it's right, based right here, right above the axle. Right above the axle as well. So the weight is perfect on it, all the weight is down here. Speaking of weight, we've decided to keep the weight down as much as we can. This is a full alloy tray, nice and light, but also super strong as well, mate. Now, the other really cool thing about the tray is the sneaky little storage bits in the tray. Now, we've got two toolboxes, one on each side, mate, and there's heaps of room in those. Absolutely. They're angled, they've got a really nice profile on them. My personal favorite, mate, is that rear trundle drawer. There's a drawer at the back, a rear trundle drawer. Um, the way you guys have set that up to ensure we've got maximum space, that is a massive, massive drawer. Even as a bloke who, breaks a few things off-road, it carries a lot of tools with him. Even I don't reckon I could fill that, that rear drawer. It's absolutely massive. And the other cool thing is it's got a lid on it. Yeah. So it'll obviously keep the dust out. Keeps keep the, the dust out. Keep and the water out. That's my favorite barbecue table. And it doubles up <laughs> as a barbecue table. So mate, super tour, off look out. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Now, you might be thinking to yourself, the tray looks a little bit bare, but um, trust me, it won't stay bare for very long. Now, we've got some tray sides um, that are color coded to the vehicle that'll go on this. So you can drive around if you want to use a full size tray and it's a proper full size tray. What, what's the dimensions of this tray? Uh, this one's two meters by two meters. Two meters by two meters. That is massive. That is, it's a big tray. You can use the full tray, that's fantastic. Um, in the first video, of course, I talked about getting a dog box built for this as well, because I wanted a spot, obviously, to keep my fridge out of the weather and a spot for my dogs as well. However, things have evolved a little bit further. Yep, after seeing Reuben wheel his full-size canopy with ease down the Glasshouse Mountains, I decided for something just a little bit bigger. But before we get into that, there's a bunch of other mods I want to show you. 
All right, let's have a look at the tires and wheels on the vehicle. Now, when it comes to picking tires and wheels for just about any build you're gonna do, you basically go by what tires you want and what look of wheels you want. But when it comes to a vehicle like this, they need a specific load rating. Because keep in mind, this has a GVM of just about four and a half tonnes. So load rating is really important so it complies. So the wheels are a Procom by Dynamic Wheels. Um, they're awesome, they're a satin black. They rec I reckon they look unreal, but most importantly, they've got a load rating of 1500 kilos. Now these tires, they're the Wrangler Duratrax. The load rating of these is 129, which equates to about 1,800 kilos. So they're over-engineered for this vehicle. They've also got a speed rating of Q, which is about 160 k's an hour. Not that I'll need to do that speed, but it's good to know that they're rated to basically handle anything I can throw at this vehicle. Well, inside the engine bay, not a lot has changed yet. There's a few key accessories that we're putting here that I think are essential for just about every vehicle. Now, later on, we're gonna get this big V8 tuned, make a lot more power. We've also got some key mods to do to the auto as well, but there'll be more on that later. Now, so far, I've put in a ProVent catch can. It's actually the very first thing I organised for this vehicle was a ProVent catch can and also a pre-line pre-filter. They're essential, I reckon. Cheap insurance for every single diesel vehicle out there. The other thing you're gonna notice is this big airbox here. This is not standard, this is a Moonlight Fabrications airbox. Now, it's common knowledge that on the 200 series, the factory airbox, in some cases, can let a little bit of dust in. Now, over the course of two, 300,000 Ks, that dust can actually get into the intake and actually dust the engine. So there's been quite a few cases where these um, big V8 diesels have been dusted. So I didn't want to take any chances. I went to one of the best um, airboxes I know, the Moonlight one. I've got it one in Sooty and the Dirty 30. Put it in here and that matches up to a five inch, that's right, five inch stainless snorkel, which I reckon looks absolutely fat. Now how good does this look? The front end of this vehicle really sets it off in my opinion. I've chosen a TJM bull bar. Now the reason for that is I have one on the 79 series. I reckon they look really good, but more importantly than that, they're very practical as well. There's so many different bars on the market, especially for popular vehicles like 200 79s. You've got to be careful when you're choosing a bar to make sure you get one that's built really well. Now a lot of them will look great, but they're not built very well. This one's built really well. And one of the cool things that show me that TJM has built this bar for four wheel drivers, it's even got integrated recovery points, at the bottom of the bar, it's super strong. It can handle recoveries, it can handle a winch and all the accessories you wanna put on the front of your vehicle. And speaking of accessories, have a look at them. I've got the set of Icon lights on here, the nine inch Terra Looms, they're insane. I've got them in all my vehicles. Um, GME, Aerial, um, and of course, a run the winch. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, where are the rails and steps? Well, Ruben's actually got those down at powder coating at the moment. He's actually extended the TJM steps so that they fit in really nicely with the CHOP 200 series. The CHOP 200 series body is actually a lot longer than a standard 200 series body because it's been extended, of course. So he's gonna make a match so they look perfect. So they're down at powder coating at the moment. So next time in the next build video we do on the 200 series, you'll see us fit the rails and also the steps, which I reckon will really set this vehicle off. And the final thing, of course, is where's the number plate? Well, the boys tell me the number plates are not far away and um, with a bit of luck, We'll be driving this vehicle home tonight. Now, this build is all about clever storage ideas and it doesn't get much more clever than this. One of the upgrades you can do at DMW that Ruben insisted I put in is the gun safe option. Check this out, hidden behind the rear seats, you've got this complete gun safe. There's, there's um, ammo uh, cases here as well. You can use it to store just about anything and it's hidden behind the seat and gives you so much storage. <laughs> it's just using that wasted space. I think that is really clever. I really love that. Well, this is a pretty special occasion because it marks the first time I've actually sat in this vehicle, believe it or not, and it's, well, it's way too flash for me. That's, that's long and short of it. But if we look at the business end, what we've done here, the guys from DMW have put another switch panel in here, which gives you more switches on the interior. So that's fantastic because I've got a few little goodies I'm putting in this vehicle. Now, first up is the Tow Pro Elite. If you want to tow heavy loads, which I plan to do, that's an absolute must have. And right next to the Tow Pro, you've got this little LED light here. Now, this is actually the little alarm for the water trap. So it's got a pre-lined pre-filter in here. So if I do get uh, water inside my diesel, well, straight away, this light's gonna flash and it's gonna actually make us an uh, audible alarm. So I'll know straight away to stop the vehicle and uh, rectify that so I don't destroy my injectors and fuel pump. Very, very handy and very cheap insurance if you ask me. Now, if we move over here, you'll be thinking, 
Do you want to, where's your UHF, mate? I see the big aerial up here. Well, this is a really cool thing because GME have actually got a little insert for the dash here on the 200s where, boy, you can just plug your handset, your GME handset for the XRS Connect straight into the dash. So if you don't need UHF, you're driving around here or something like that, you can get it out of the way. Now for me, mine's always going to be mounted in there and it really is as simple as grab your handpiece, which has got the mic and all your controls on it, and plug it straight in. Now it's also got a magnetic base as well, so that can leave, that can live right there. And the actual, the actual unit for the XRS is hidden well up behind the glove box. So it's out of sight, out of mind, but um, I think it's a really neat install. Again, if you've got a modern vehicle, there's not much dash space to fit things like UHFs. So luckily GME do think outside the square and that's a really neat fit. Now the other cool thing as well is I've got a 6.6 .6 dB aerial on the um, bull bar there, which is what I'll probably run most of the time. But I've also got a little smaller aerial with a smaller gain as well. So if I go to places like the high country or Tasmania where there's lots of mountainous, like tight windy roads, the little smaller gain aerial is gonna be way better in those sort of countries. But for the outback and mostly at driving I'll be doing this vehicle, the big 6.6 .6 dB is gonna be the way to go. All right, time to check out the canopy. This beauty will run the full length of the tray and it's going to be an amazing blank canvas to build the ultimate remote area tourer. Righto, time to get a canopy on. This is incidentally the longest I've ever driven the vehicle as well. <laughs> it's exciting times. So as you can see, I've decided to go for a full-size canopy. Now, the reason being, and why we changed from the idea of going for a dog box and a half uh, tray setup was because I can have the best of both worlds. Because we can jack this uh, canopy off in, what, about two minutes, really? Yeah. Just with those little legs, that we can take this off and use it as a full-size ute with a full-size tray and also put a canopy on, which, as you know, if you're into touring, that gives you the best platform to make this the ultimate tour. So I thought, heck, let's do it. The Dirty 30's got a half canopy, and I like that for weight distribution, but this one's got a GV upgrade. It can handle four and a half tonne. Yeah. Let's put a big canopy on. It's alloy anyway, mate. And yeah. um, we actually weight it. What did it weigh in it? Weigh Just it. short of 3,400. 3,400 kilos so with the canopy 1. on, 1. with the tray. That's right, 1.1 1. 1 tonne it can still have before it reaches its GVM. So that's pretty insane. So mm. we've still yet to fit the canopy out. Uh, there's gonna be drawers, fridges, stuff like that. That's all extra weight. But when you've got 1.1, 1. 1, so 1,100 kilos to play with, I mean, that is insane. That's why I suppose a lot of people put that GVM upgrade, isn't it? Absolutely. You'll be able to put your still three and a half tonne on the back. It's all 350 kg download, and you'll still be able to carry all your gear. All your gear, how good's that? Now, a standard uh, 200 series, standard wagon, what's the um, payload on one of those? Oh, it's, you get passengers in it and a full tank of fuel, and you're at the limit. You're basically, <laughs> you're basically at your limit, and that's yeah. the thing, that's the thing. That's why GVM upgrades are so popular, because you can do this, you can have the accessories, the modification needed to see Australia properly, and you're not breaking any laws. You keep the vehicle legal, um, your insurance isn't affected, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And if you ask me, it's just a good way to go about carrying the weight right. Well, mate, look, it's turned out so well. I'm so excited. And the, look, the color scheme, the, everything, mate, just looks so good. But there's one thing that's gonna look even better. You driving out the gate. Bingo! <laughs> As the guys put the final huff and polish on their work, there's one more addition to the 200 I wanna show you. And that, of course, is some new towing mirrors. We've gone with the clear view mirrors because I've got a big canopy on the back, so seeing out the back, even though it's got a camera inside there, you can actually see out the back, which is pretty cool. You will not be able to see when you're towing especially. So the clear view, this is next gen ones, they, they slide right out. And um, the cool thing about these ones as well, if I push them back in, you'll notice that they've got the indicator in here. There's two different uh, mirrors and also the factory camera has been integrated into these clear views. So it's like a factory mirror, but just way better for towing. Well, I can't believe this day is finally here. The day that I get to drive home in my brand new CHOP 200 series. And mate, <laughs> I don't know what to say. I, I, I'm Not very often I'm stuffed for words, mate, but this has come out way better than I could have ever imagined, mate. I want to say a massive thank you to you and all the boys at BMW. I saw thank the you. guys working on it and the attention to detail is just insane. I've got to say, I didn't do bugger all in this build and uh, it's turned out, well, that's probably why it turned out so good because I didn't do a lot on it. But I'll tell you what, mate, I'll just, a really, really big thank you. This no is... worries at all, Sean. So happy that you are happy with how it turned out, and I love your colour scheme. It's come out so good, hasn't it? You know, it's one of those things, you just never know how it's going to sort of work out. You get a bit of an idea in your head, but when it all starts to come together, and um, you know, look, we've evolved along this build, and uh, you've listened to a lot of you guys with your comments, and um, you know, that's, that's really inspired me 
to make some of the decisions I have, and I reckon I'll just, I'm just so stoked with it, mate. I'm so stoked. Well, I reckon you need to take it for oh, a drive. Oh, far out. I've been waiting for this day. <laughs> so excited. I'm so excited. Look, before I take it for a spin, guys, we've still got another episode to film on the 200 series build. It's not 100% done yet. There's a few more accessories you want to put on. We want to fit the inside of the canopy. It's a full blank canvas inside that canopy. So this is where you guys come in. I want your help. What should I do inside the canopy? It's a full blank canvas. I've never really decked a big canopy out before. So guys, what the must-haves I should have in that canopy? How would you set up a big canopy like that? I well, can't wait to see what you put down in the comments. I'm going to be going right through it and um, I'm going to use a lot of those ideas for the next video when we kit this out. Mate, this grin couldn't get any bigger, but it's about to. So I'm going to jump in here, take this for a spin and um, mate, it's going to look really good next to the Dirty 30. I'll tell you what. Oh, absolutely. Mate, Ruben, put it there, buddy. Champion, <laughs> mate. Thanks a lot, legends.